Cartilage is this fantastic tissue that makes up that flexible part of your ear, the end of your nose, and the cushioning between your joints. It's also what the skeleton of animals like sharks and rays are made up of. If you're an athlete, understanding the basics of cartilage will help you prolong your career. Here's what you need to know. First, cartilage is a connective tissue, like muscles and bones, yet they're also very different. If you break a bone or tear a muscle, you know it right away, because it's full of nerves. Cartilage, though, doesn't have nerves, so you won't know you damaged your cartilage unless it affects the underlying bone. Also, those bones and muscles will heal. Cartilage? Not so well. But to get why, we first need to distinguish between a few different types of cartilage. There's elastic cartilage, which is very flexible and found in places like your ear. Then there's hyaline cartilage that is super smooth and tough. It has minimal flexibility, but its glassy smooth surfaces keep our joints sliding smoothly. Then there's fibrocartilage. This cartilage is tough and flexible, but not particularly smooth. It's found in places like your menisci and the intervertebral discs. Many people have this idea that cartilage doesn't ever heal or grow back. In truth, it can, but very, very slowly. Like other tissues, cartilage is made up of cells. These are known as chondrocytes. Now, when other tissues get damaged, they are able to essentially migrate to the wound and divide and multiply rapidly. Chondrocytes can't do that easily for two reasons. First, they're found in a thick matrix, so it's hard for them to migrate to new areas. Secondly, there are no arteries or veins in the cartilage, meaning there's no blood supply to help feed and nourish the multiplying cells. The limited supply they get through diffusion just isn't enough for the rapid growth that is needed. Let's take this example. So say you suffered a joint injury, like ruptured ligaments, menisci, etc. This destabilizes the joint, which in turn affects the cartilage in the long term by wear and tear. This process can take a year or a decade after injury, but it's not reversible. The early changes in cartilage are hard to feel since there are no nerves. But after losing most of the cartilage, the two highly innervated bones are exposed and begin to rub against each other. Yeah, and that really hurts. At this point, the doctor can only medicate the pain since most of the cartilage is gone. If detected early, sometimes doctors will try to encourage cartilage to grow back in the area by putting a bunch of holes in the underlying bone that penetrate the bone marrow, and they call this microfracture. This essentially provides a blood supply and allows some stem cells in the bone marrow to migrate to the injured area to regrow some cartilage. The problem is that it's not that nice, smooth, hyaline cartilage that we want. It's essentially scar tissue-like fibrocartilage. It does help protect the bone, but it's not as smooth as we'd all like, and thus doesn't work as well. Since the goal is that nice smooth cartilage, doctors have a few other advanced cartilage repair techniques. Often they'll take grafts from elsewhere, either your own cartilage or from a cadaver. But you can't just take the cartilage. You take a plug that consists of the cartilage and the bone. The implanted bone will heal quickly with your bone and hopefully lead to a successful operation. The problem with this is that your body may reject the tissue coming from another patient, or if you take the cartilage from another part of your joint, then you leave a new hole in your joint. For future repairs, scientists are working on growing these plugs from our own cells. For instance, one technique could be to take adult stem cells from your own fat cells that can turn into bone and cartilage. Then, through different techniques, tell those cells to either turn into bone or cartilage, and then insert that whole thing back into the damaged area. So, if you're an active individual, here's the key. Be kind to your joints and cartilage. You only have so much, and while it does have some healing potential, it's not much. Also, if you injure your joint, go to a trained orthopedic doctor right away. It'll be a lot easier to salvage your cartilage if you detect the damage early than if you wait until it's mostly gone. Thanks for watching this Sportology short. Make sure to check out this video on cartilage repair basics. And I highly recommend this playlist with the sports science videos from our collaboration with Ortho Carolina here, where we're trying to educate everybody about the basics of their body. The idea that I might not be able to run again simply because the cartilage in my knee is messed up is frustrating. If you're like me and your knee's messed up, you want to fix it. And you need to know about cartilage to do that. And you need to know what your options are for cartilage repair. And that's what we're going to talk about today.